And this works so well, because the chatbot isn't just using the power of GPT-4, but also the specific knowledge of this heat pump model from the PDF we uploaded to this GPT. It's even upselling maintenance based on our instructions. That was the custom GPT I created and added to that website. And in this video, I'll show you how to do that in just a few steps. And we're gonna use the Assistance API to build this GPT, which has all the same features of the GPTs you can create inside ChatGPT, such as the ability to upload a custom PDF as a knowledge base. And OpenAI has provided a way to build them in their developer portal with no code required, not even a ChatGPT Plus account. I picked a heat pump company as an example, which is a booming competitive industry where I think AI could really give companies an edge. So let's jump right in and start building. The first step is to create a GPT. And we're gonna use the OpenAI developer portal. And I'll include a link to this in the description. Once you sign in, open the assistance section and click create. Give the GPT a name and then set the instructions, which is really important. These are what tailor and customize the GPT and will be included as context for every conversation user has with the GPT. So this one starts with, you are a mini split heating and cooling expert in Daikin heat pumps. But I'll spend a lot of time refining these instructions to get just the response you're looking for. But remember, aside from being helpful to customers, we're also trying to upsell in this GPT. So I added a section where the AI can append a booking link to the end of the response, which is really super powerful. And I'm playing around with more options here where the bot could actually book the appointment automatically. Next, you have to pick the model. This GPT-41106 preview that's the GPT-4 Turbo. That's gonna be quite a bit cheaper than GPT-4 and should give you almost as good results. The other option would be GPT-3.5 Turbo, but I'll talk a bit more about pricing later in the video. But for now, we'll take 4 Turbo. Additional to the custom instructions, we wanna give this GPT custom knowledge. I'll do that with a PDF of the user manual for the Daikin heat pump that I have. You gotta click on retrieval and then just add the file. And that's it, our GPT is done. At this point, you can just test it right here in the playground. So I do that to refine it and get it just how you like it. When you're happy, just copy this ID. We're gonna need this later. Step two is to create a deployable chatbot out of the GPT. And the easiest place I found to do this is BotPress. So once you got your account set up with BotPress, you need to download the GPT bot template. And I'll link to that in the description under step two. Once you have that downloaded, just say create chatbot. And you can just say start from scratch. Now once it's open in the studio, on the very top left, click on that and say import, import from file. This is where you upload the GPT template. And if you check over on the left-hand side under all variables and you see one for assistant ID and open AI token, you know you're good. You got the right template deployed. So now all you have to do is publish it and share it. And when you click share it, it's gonna open up the chatbot in a new window. If you just type in here something like configure bot, it'll come up with the two steps needed to get this thing working. And the first one is, remember that assistant ID we copied in the last step? Now you have to paste that here. And after that's done, we have to give it an open AI API key. And that's it, the bot's set up. Now we can start using it. So at this point, I do some testing inside BotPress just to make sure the GPT is working as you expected. And the final step is to deploy this chatbot onto the website. And BotPress makes it really easy. So if you just go to your bot that you just configured, go to the integrations tab, and under web chat, under pre-configured, go down to embedded. And this is the script code you can put in your website to have that little bot icon appear and have the bot working. So let's copy that. And I found it's pretty flexible, but where you put it in your HTML code of your website. So in this case, I'm just gonna put it in the banner section of the website. So I'll just paste the two script lines in there. And then we'll redeploy the website and see what happens. Well, there it is. So I found it doesn't really matter where you put it in your HTML. It just puts it right down in the bottom right corner. And if you scroll through the website, it also stays right there, which is nice. So let's try it out. So I actually had this heat pump and, and the remote it comes with is so confusing. So it'll be interesting to see if the bot can actually answer this question. Oh, there it is, like perfect. And it even gives you the source from the PDF itself where it found this information, which I don't actually really want on here, but I haven't found a way yet to turn off sourcing. Custom maintenance link here, which is a really cool upsell. So I think this bot's really useful for both the customer and the business. Super impressive. Another cool feature is it actually saves the conversation history in a thread. So when you go back in the same browser to that chat bot, it brings all your history back and uses that as context for future queries. But there are a few things that aren't great, at least not yet, because remember, this is still in beta. The response from the GPT takes a while. I sped it up in the video, but it took a good 20 seconds to get that response back, which I feel is a little bit too long. And it costs more than I was expecting. I think a big reason for that was the PDF I used as a knowledge base was full of diagrams, useless text, which ended up being token intensive and kind of expensive to use it. In the future, I think I'm just gonna have text files and add those as the knowledge base. Inside those text files, I'll just put the important information as well as frequently asked questions, just basically high value content in the text files. But also I don't think I'm gonna use it right now for publicly facing websites. And I actually think it's more powerful to show it to users after they authenticate it. Because in that case, you can actually build a profile for that user. You know what products they bought. And you can tailor make a GPD just for them. So I can do a whole video on that concept. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.